Hey, Creative Mom, Camilla here. So tonight I'm gonna let the dog out of the bag. I'm gonna show you how I hand paint my UV resin dog keychains. They are my number one seller and I'm so excited to show you all how I create them. Let's get started. All right, so when you order from a company like Craft Chameleon, they'll send you an email with your digital downloads. So I just will put in this information and grab my digital downloads. And the one I'm using today is for the Irish Setter. And then you're going to, I put them where I can find them again. So I'm gonna go ahead and extract all, and I'm gonna browse and I always put them in the same spot. So I have a design downloads folder and extract. And now we are ready to go to Cricut Design Space and open up a new project. And then we're gonna upload, upload image, browse, and it's going to be wherever you put it. So I put it in my downloads, and then I'm going to look for Irish Sutter, and it's all of these that are from Craft Chameleon come with a CC in the front. And I have lots. Where is it? There we are. And then I use this one, the PNG file, and upload. And insert my image or add it to the canvas. And we're gonna confirm that the size is right. And you can do so by opening that file up and viewing the measurements in here. Two point one five nine, two point nine five two. So we are perfect. We are ready to cut this. I am going to cut it in white. I've got this cut. Here's my piece of vinyl. The other supplies that I have out are my silicone brush and my silicone stir stick. And then of course the acrylic blank. And then I have my hardware, and I have black and white makeup powder along with the cups to stir those in. And then I also have my UV resin. I'm using the Craft Chameleon uh, Leon UV resin, and I'm a big fan of it. And then, of course, I have my UV light hanging out over here ready for us as well. It doesn't really want to come in the picture. Okay, so I am going to start by removing the... Uh, acrylic protective coating and acrylic keychains can be worked either way. Come on little guy. I don't want to scratch it while I'm doing this so you kind of want to be careful but once you get a corner it comes off super easy. Of course I'm going to make a fool out of that but my nails are getting really strong and so <laughs> They're uh, kind of long, and that kind of scrapes things differently. All right, so then we've got that, and I need a little piece of transfer tape. One moment. So this dog also has an ear that comes out. You do have to cut this twice on this dog if you want it to be a different color. But anyway, then I'm going to transfer this to my blank and there's all kinds of methods on how to do this. This is just how I do it. And remove my transfer tape and I am going to just line my head up and center this on here very carefully. You really get one shot so use it wisely. <laughs> it's really not too bad usually and I'll show you a trick if I got any off too far on an edge, 
and just a little bit around his face it seems that's what I did so what I'm gonna do is just take a nail file and I'm just gonna barely in one direction trim off anything that I got over on that head and it sands down amazing and really easy then to have it look great and then I also at this time am going to use my diamond reamer tool and I'm going to poke out the hole for the keychain because we don't want to fill that with resin so I'm going to go ahead and poke it through all right so now we need to mix up our resin and I don't need too much of either of these colors so I'm gonna put just a dot of resin in this cup and a dot of resin in this cup the nice thing about UV resin is it stores so I can put lids on these cups and I can store it and I love that I'm gonna add some white to one and black to the other and then I'm gonna stir these up this white obviously has a hole it's powdering everywhere so I'm gonna do a scoop I like concentrated colors when I am painting with resin and makeup powder so all stirred in perfect and then this one's going to get the black and I have a pack of six pack for my stir sticks so they're really just handy especially when you mix up uh, more than one color which I mean I am a colorful person so black and white is actually different for me but I like lots of color so and you could just cover these keychains like they are um, just cutting vinyl um, I just choose to hand paint them all right so I have both my colors and I'm gonna move this a little closer so it holds that set that out of the way this is the brush I'm gonna use and it is just flat and then pointy so it works really well and I am gonna grab a wipe and clean up real quick and then I'll meet you back we're gonna start designing this dog all right, so this adorable pup has a black ear, and that's what we're going to start on here. You do want to make sure that all of your vinyl on these acrylic blanks is cleaned up nicely because that helps your resin not run over. So, all right, now we're ready to go ahead and put in this black ear. And I'm really, I'm going to have to, yep, that's just what I was going to say. I'm going to have to lose those brushes. Too clumsy. So I'm going to grab my makeup powder and my resin and just start putting it in here. When you mix it thick like this, it really makes it easy to apply. and it actually will paint. Now, what I'm gonna show you is if you want to get lines in here, then you actually start them further apart and cure them, and then come back to it. That way you will be able to get full lines. So that, I'm gonna do that similar to how we are going to get an eye and a nose into this. So I just kind of started my spots on the face and this, the fur is kind of spots, but if you wiggle them, then it helps it look 3D after you add your top coat of vinyl. So that's how I get the fur lines, is just the wiggles. So whatever color and wiggle. And I'm going to go kind of heavy on the spots. This is a very spotted dog, but also I'm going to end with getting fur 
texture with my white so some of this will get covered up and the fur down here and his little feet and I might put a line in there so we're going to cure this and then we're going to switch to white so it just goes underneath my UV light for the full 99 seconds and then it will be cure and we'll meet back when we're ready to add the white fur So when this comes out of the UV light, it should be hard. Nothing is smudging and it's cured. The other thing I was going to say is make sure you remove these because if this glares, if your light glares on it, it will, these will cure and then you've wasted. Um, other than that, you can keep UV resin. So that's awesome. So I'm just going to use a wet wipe and wipe my brush off here. I will say make a powder that will kind of stain. So you do want to make sure you clean those up and I'm going to grab my white and what I'm doing with the white is just adding some dots to add texture. So I'm just going to add these big dots and then I'm going to take it and swirl it all over and it's going to look really light. It's very hard to see in the camera, but it's going to look very, very light. Okay. Now you can kind of see where I'm at and all I'm doing is swirling. So I dot and then swirl until I am getting a texture that I like and it will make the fur, it will make it look like it has fur. And you can also go back and do that with your black on that ear. And I can even do the little bit of white just to kind of gloss that over so that it gets a little bit of that as well. A little more makeup powder down here and I like to make sure I get fur all the way down on the feet you know dogs are furry everywhere and so once I've swirled the fur color all over and up here I'm gonna stick it under the light and then we still have to get that eye and nose on under the light and we'll be back for eye and nose all right so that should be done and so what I'm gonna do is grab my white back from hiding from the light and I'm gonna I have this a little bit of browns makeup powder and I'm going to use it in the corner of this white hopefully and just makes a little bit of it in here to get a little different color for his nose and eye just so they stand out so they're black but I needed something to make them show so I, I did add a little bit of the black and it just is making just a little bit different shade of kind of actually a really pretty silvery and that's just going to let you know the eyes think a little bit of an eye and a little bit of a nose that is not where I want that eye and this detailed brush works amazing for this And it's one little dot there for an eye. And then I want to get his nose on. And it's the same thing right up here in the corner. And now he has an eye and a, no uh, and a nose. And he goes back under and next we need to cover him completely with UV resin. All right, so that should be perfect. It had a few seconds left, but I am ready to cover this. So I just take my UV resin right from my bottle, which I really should shut that off, and go all the way around. And you do want to try to squeeze slowly to avoid air bubbles. However, I did get two huge ones down here in the back legs. So 
they are right back here and all I'm gonna do is take my brush and poke and they were both surface bubbles so they came right out if you get bubbles underneath your resin where you can't poke and get them out like I just did you can use the spritz of rubbing alcohol or you can use a lighter I will tell you my preferred method would be I paused because I was concentrating <laughs> my preferred method would be the lighter I have not had the best luck removing bubbles with the rubbing alcohol without causing the top to look not quite as clear as I usually get. This UV resin is very clear, but the rubbing alcohol adds like a texture, and I'm not a fan. So you just kind of slowly work the resin all the way out to the edges. And UV resin is really cool because it does not want to go over the edge but it does sometimes. So take a look up by the face because as soon as I went to say that, I noticed I have way too much resin on here and completely flooded the face. So this is where I would definitely use, I was really struggling there. I got too much. I definitely put too much on him. Uh, I like them to have a nice thick coat, but this was too much today. Um, so what I'm going to do, this is where rubbing alcohol comes in handy. So I'm going to grab my rubbing alcohol and another good old baby wipe, which we know I just had and now I can't find. And found them. And so what I'll do first is get the mess cleaned up off my board and then just take the baby wipe and get a chunk of it cleaned off. So just wiping underneath. All right, and then I'm gonna take rubbing alcohol and make this wet wipe saturated with rubbing alcohol. And then I'm gonna wipe the bottom and the sides with rubbing alcohol. And then you have to watch yourself because sometimes where you held on to them needs wiped as well and I did need to do that all right and I'm just checking all my sides I'm gonna set it back down the rubbing alcohol won't hurt anything and I want to come with my face down to eye level and look this way and make sure that there's no more issues and there is I'm having a great day with my little puppy there and it's right at his tail. That tail was a very fine line and I bet I ran the brush right over it and forgot. So you just rub that, take this wet wipe with the rubbing alcohol and just run right through there. So I did the other side first and now I'm going to do the rubbing alcohol side. It just stops it completely when you do that and nothing on the back. All right. So now I'm going to try to see if I can set him underneath the light. I do like to even bring him up to eye level. Everything looks great. So a little bit more at the top. I did not get around the top of the eye here. Believe it or not, there was an area that did not have enough resin. And it looks like his snout could use a little, yep, it sure could little more as well okay and if you notice that time I used the tip of my brush which is handy to the ball side now one more last check it is best to cover all of this in your first coat and do one and only on your top that is my suggestion all right it looks great and it goes underneath the light All right, so it is hard. I did go ahead and cure it twice this time, only because I'm gonna dive right into getting the hardware on it, so I definitely wanted it good and hard. 
This is headed out to the customer ASAP. So I'm going to show you how I have finished these. And I have two needle nose pliers and a jump ring. I'm going to grab the jump ring and turn it sideways. And then it goes inside the hook and the keychain goes on. And then you're going to slide that jump ring. Nope, I'm going to go grab a bigger jump ring. I This one is for the embellishment, but I want to not use this for the keychain hardware. So I have a better jump ring. All right, this jump ring is much better, so I've already separated it. Feed it through, keychain through, and close it. And if you just slide them side to side like this, then they close and open really nicely. All right, and then I'm going to do the same thing to put on my charm. I have a Paul charm. So, and it's personal preference on where you put the charms. And I'm going to tell you from a sales um, side, it really does not matter. Um, on a booth, they sell. That's they On a website, they sell. And it doesn't matter where you put them. So don't put too much thought into it. And there is my adorable Irish setter. Isn't that pretty? I absolutely love UV resin. Take a look in the description and you'll find all the products I used and links to them. Like and subscribe while you're there if you would. Have a joyful day. Thanks for watching. Bye.